Hello guys, two new about again. Well, Atari Age um, Neo Geo Fred is reaching its uh, grand old age of seven years. Uh, it's been going for, and uh, that's coming up on the 24th of March, which hopefully is today if I get uh, posting this video uh, on the right day. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the forum is run by Anthony, who's a really nice guy indeed, and keeps everyone up to date with um, all the Neo Geo news and SNK news out there. So basically head over to the forum and have a look. I will put links and everything which I'm going to be showing in this video will all be at the bottom. So you can go and check it out for yourselves. Um, I say it's coming up to seven years. Uh, it's been an interesting seven years. And I, I check in there quite often myself. And I post videos on it. So what I'm doing, I'm going to post a video. I'm going to do this video. Um, on something a little bit different this year. I've, I've done videos in the past on Neo Geo. And so has everyone else. And... I've done new Geo hardware, I've done games and everything. I was thinking, what the hell am I actually going to do for a video to make it a little bit different? So what I've decided, I've picked myself up a mister and I'm pretty much going to um, show you everything you can do with the mister FPGA core for the, for the new Geo core. Uh, this is a pretty fantastic project. Uh, it's a fantastic core. Uh, it's, it's, well, it's, it's pretty much a new Geo. But anyway... So let's get into it. Let's get into what the actual mister is itself. Uh, like I said, I'm no expert at any of this stuff. So if I do get something slightly wrong, don't uh, crucify me for it, hopefully. Uh, hopefully I won't anyway, but here we go. Right, the mister project is based on uh, FPGA, which is a field programmable gate array. Uh, what that is, is pretty much a chip with uh, multiple logic gates and various other little components inside it that can be reprogrammed to be other hardware so basically as long as as long as you program the chip correctly and you get all the circuit diagrams and everything correct you you can program it to be other hardware so it could be chips it can be processors cpus um and it, it can be a whole hardware in one piece and pretty much this is what the neo geo core is uh, the chip itself is based on a cyclone 5 but it's a more higher end cyclone 5 110 uh, thousand logic units uh, it's pretty much the same chip that's in the analog consoles but the analog consoles use a lower end version of that chip because obviously they don't need so many logic units more logic units more it cost uh, the board itself is a thoracic uh, d10 nano board um, it's a it's a board that was made for um, professors universities and um, companies for prototyping essentially so it, it is an industrial grade board um so we can stand quite a bit of heat and various other things <coughs> so i guess so it is it is a well-made piece of kit um what you do with that then you before you can really take advantage of uh, this you you need a couple of extra boards the only problem with the mr project because it's a community-based thing and it's based on a pretty much a prototyping board um you have to buy a lot of your components from various different places and there's different types of components different sizes but uh, there are people who are putting them together and sell them as one unit so if you want the easy option just buy it as one unit which is pretty much what i did so so what do you actually need to get started with neo geo the d10 uh, nano board which is the actual fpga and everything itself this board does have one usb on it and it does output hdmi uh, what you'll need then, if you want to take full advantage of it, you'll need the USB uh, board that goes on the bottom, which is like um, it's like a USB hub essentially. Usually got seven ports on it. Uh, then you'll need the RAM expansions. Uh, the D10 Nano does have a quad core um, ARM processor on the board. Um, I think it's an ARM processor anyway, <clears throat> and it comes with one gig of RAM. But that one gig of RAM, as far as I know. It can't be used by the cores. I think it can be, but they don't use it, essentially. I'm not sure exactly how it works. But it can't be used by the cores. So you have to buy a RAM module. Uh, to run Neo Geo games, you need at least a 64 gig RAM module. But recommended is the 128, which is the biggest one you can get at the moment. And is the more future-proof board to get. Um, there's only one one game on the Neo Geo that uses more than the 64, and that's the Bad Apple demo, 
which which requires the one tweet. But if you have a new Geo uh, game, basically it will run on the 64. Uh, but the one trait is what you want. Uh, and then what you can do then, you can get an I.O. board, which goes on the top. What that does, it extends some of the buttons from the D2, uh, the D10 nano board up to the top. So it gives you free buttons, which would basically reset the actual D10, uh, reset the core and a menu button. And it also gives you the, the, there's two boards. There's a digital board and there's an analog board. I went for the analog board. Probably I'm not going to use it because I play everything on uh, LCDs. But if you go for the analog board, it gives you VGA out. From that VGA out then, you can basically output that to a CRT. So you can do RGB, you can do S-Video. Um, I'm not sure if you can do comp composites, uh, component. Not sure if you can do component, you might be able to. But you can output that to a CRT. What that does then, every core used by the mister will output the exact refresh rate and the exact uh, resolution as the original machines. It's, it's essentially hardware emulating. Um, so basically, once you put that into a CRT, it'll look exactly like whatever hardware you're using. There is a little bit of controversy where people call it, people not calling it emulation. Um, essentially, you've got two types of emulation out there. Most of us have probably played uh, on MAME, or we've played Neo Geo games on various other things, on mini consoles, buddy phones, whatever. Uh, that is emulation, and that, that uses a, a sequential um, tasking. So essentially, it has to run each chip and each part of that, one after another, to run the game, and then it outputs it to your, your screen. Uh, the only problem with that is that it's not exactly... It's not exactly correct to um, how things work, and and you you can you can introduce input lag because you have to run each section after another, you have to process all that, and then it displays it to your screen. Um, you no, know, most emulators these days, to be honest, have only got a couple of frames of input lag, and as long as you've got a decent TV or monitor, and you're pretty okay, uh, and most people have got used to it. But the only problem with emulation, it skips a lot of bits as well so it's it's more how can i say it's more interested in displaying what the game can play and other than doing it correctly and displaying it as it should originally does on the original hardware uh, it's like final burn emulator for instance uh that that plays games plays games very well but it it it's, it doesn't it doesn't run the games it doesn't try to run the games correctly exactly as the original hardware does. Where MAME does try to actually do that. This is why MAME tends to be a lot slower. Because uh, running machines on emulation, especially if you're doing cycle correct emulation, where it's trying to run everything all at one point, uh, you need really powerful PCs for that. It's crazy. You've got this uh, Mega Drive emulator called Blastem, which is cycle correct. So it tries to basically run everything all at the same time, exactly as a Mega Drive would run, with all hardware working in tandem with each other. Only problem is, you need a damn good PC to run a Mega Drive game on that game on that uh, emulator, but it does a fantastic job if you've got it. Uh, difference with FPGA, it uh, it runs everything in parallel. So once that FPGA is programmed in the hardware descript language HDL, um, and it's programmed correctly to to mimic or emulate the original hardware. Uh, it then will run everything all at the same time, just like you would in original. You plug your Neo Geo cartridge in, your Neo Geo boots up, and essentially everything's working together and it runs the game. And that's pretty much how um, how the FPGA works. The, you, you can still get inaccurate FPGAs because they still have to be programmed to be correct to the original hardware. So, like emulation, you know, FPGAs will get better over time and various ways. So, the more, the better it's designed in, F, in an FPGA, the more correct it'll actually be. The Neo Geo Core, for instance, I think Furtech and maybe a couple of other people, they decapped the original chips on uh, the new geo boards and took high resolution microscopic photos of all the connections and all the little things actually inside the chips and they replicated that in the hdl so pretty much this new geo core is pretty much smack on it's pretty much a new geo so once that f once that fpga is turned on and you flash it with the core that fpga essentially becomes a new geo so so this is, it's not emulated in software, it's essentially hardware emulated, 
I know people don't like that, but you know that's essentially what it is. It's a hardware emulation of a Neo Geo running in real time. So there's no running one process after another. The whole machine is running just exactly as it would be on a Neo Geo. So going from that, I'll I'll put links to all the information in the um, in the description. So you can have a read of it yourself. Uh, this this machine doesn't just run Neo Geo either. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll have a, I'll give you a quick run through or a quick montage or something of what this machine can actually run. And to be honest, if you if if you're after something like emula like emulation, but essentially better, faster, lower input lag, FPGA is the way to go. Um, as I say, you can you can output to CRT plus you can output to um, a HDMI. You can do this at the same time as well, which is really good. Plus, there's a couple of options you can do to your HDMI output. It it runs standard in compatible view mode, which gives you two, which is a two frame buffer. Um, you can change that to a one frame buffer, which then I think it it basically changes all games to run exactly 60 hertz. And then there's a no frame buffer that has got four li um, video lines of input lag. So essentially, there's a lagless HDMI option, which is pretty much what I'm using. Um, so basically, you get you get the same as long as you've got a fast TV, of course, with low input lag. You can get the same experience as you would on a CRT. So Going from that, I'm going to actually show you what this core can actually do. Um, I've got everything running on here. I'll run through a lot of the settings what this core could do. And uh, we'll have a bit of fun doing that. Like I said, these cores are updated quite a lot as well, which is uh, pretty good. So um, if there is any issues, they are slightly ironed out. But i got to admit, this Neo Geo core is perfect. And most of the cores I've played on here are pretty perfect as well. Um, there are... Beta cores and officially supported cores. The Neo Geo is an official core, so it's open source official. And uh, there are a few beta cores. The beta cores means that they're, they're pretty, they're pretty much not finished, but they run in. Uh, I got the Sharp X sixty eight thousand. This is one of the examples of that. It runs fantastic. Uh, it's got a few sound issues and stuff, and some things don't run. But generally, it's a pretty fantastic core. But it's still in beta. But the Neo Geo one isn't. It. It's it's a proper full on core. So. What we'll do is, we'll um, we'll show some of them what the actual uh, machine can do next, and uh, we'll back them up. Hello guys, right here we go. So this is the um, FPGA core for the Neo Geo on the misstep. Uh, as you can see, it's Garo Mark, Mark of the Wolves running in the background. Uh, I say this is running real time on the actual core. So what you can do with this core. If you bring up the menu, um, you can load your ROM sets. So pretty much anything on the Neo Geo you can get on here. This uses the um, Darksoft ROM set, if I remember rightly. You can find that in the Internet Archive if you go looking. Right then, so I'll run through the options you can do with this core. So basically, you can run this as a console core, or you can run it as an arcade core. It's up to you. You can change the BIOS on it. So you can run this with the original Neo Geo BIOS, or you can run it with the Uni BIOS. Uni BIOS is really handy, if you've ever seen it. You can run in NTSC or PAL. I won't bother changing that, because it'll desync. You can basically run with a memory card plugged in, memory card unplugged. You can reload the memory cards, you can save your memory card states, or you can auto-load memory cards back into state, which is good. Uh, you've got dip switch settings. So basically, you can you can basically go into all the dip switches. Uh, you can add free play. You can I don't know if that is that option change when you do that. No. Um, you can basically do everything you can basically as you would on a proper Neo Geo. Um, let's see if we go into dip switch settings and reset. Uh, can we go this call? Yeah, let's reset and apply. See if this goes actually into the dip switches. Yes. Right. So basically, you're going to your, your standard Neo Geo dip switch settings. It's got the time and everything, which is the exact time what is here. Um. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention with the um. With the uh, uh what do you call it? The Mister. You um. You do have an option for real time clock. It doesn't cost very much, and it adds a battery and it adds a real time clock, which keeps your times and everything. You don't need it, but it's there an option if you if you want to buy it.
Uh, so basically, this is your, your normal Dipswitch settings you would get with uh, Neo Geo. As we've all been in here, the bookkeeping and everything. So I'm going to turn that. Um, I'm going to turn that back off, and I'm going to reset this core, and it'll go back then, basically. It'll go back in the garu. Um, right, video options. These there's a lot of stuff that's been added in you lately. It's quite a bit. So what you can do with video options, you can change the border on left and right. Uh, sometimes you get that slight bit of overscan. You can actually get rid of that overscan by adjusting that um, that option. You can play an original 4.3, or you can play in widescreen. It's up to you. Um, scan doublet. What that does, if you're using a CRT or you're on a um, VGA connection, you can have 15 kilohertz display or 30, 32 kilohertz or whatever it is, 30 kilohertz, kilohertz, kilohertz display. So you can basically output in high res or low res. Um, if you click it again, then you get CRT scan lines in HDMI. Uh, as you can see, they uh, go. And these are the scan lines that are generally built into the cores on this machine. I'm going to turn that back off. These are options that have been added uh, lately. Uh, what this does is gives you full integer scaling. So what it means by that is sometimes emulators, they take a picture and they stretch it and blow it up to fit the full screen. But they don't keep the right um, scale. When they do that, they just stretch it in sometimes more on your, on your vertical and less on your, your horizontal. And then when that happens, you hen I don't know if you've ever seen in emulations, you get like a shimmery screen when you get scrolling vertical or horizontal. The screen shimmers and looks a little bit wobbly. Well, that's because it's a non-integer scale. Um, what you can do in here, you can basically inter integer scale in various ways and do wider and you go back to normal. Um, what then you can do while you you can do while you're in it the integer scales which is smaller. See that's what that's exactly the scale of the what the new geo output would actually be. And then what you can do then you can vertical crop and you can stretch it five times do a five times integer scale on it to make it exactly full screen. So that's quite a nice option they've added. Originally, you had to do that by adding, by uh, editing the indie files. But they've added that to a lot of the cores now, which is rather nice. So basically, you can, you've got a choice. You can, you can use the cores to stretch it, but you might get a bit of shimmering, or you can use the integer scaling, and then you can stretch it up to five times if you get it to fit your screen. Um, stereo mix. What this does, it, it takes your left and right stereo sound. <laughs> it's a bit off-putting the way how it works. Like you, you think stereo mix, you think you take your mono sound and it'll split it between the two headphones, you know, left and right. But it doesn't seem to do that. What it does, it takes your stereo mix and it blends them together. So say like you're playing on the Amiga core, where you may get like one or two channels in your left and one or two channels in your right, and sometimes you get sound sound effects in your left and music in your right. What you can do is you can blend that together to get it in both both left and right, which comes in very handy when you're wearing headphones. That's all I can say. So basically, generally, you wouldn't want to mess with that unless you run in something that, you know, you're getting different sounds on both sides and they're not, they're not mixing together. So that it's more of a stereo mix, which is pretty much what it says, but that's what it does anyway. Um, on the second thing then, what you'd get when you start the core up, um, you pretty much, it's as simple as this. Once you, use, it, this, this mister will run any USB controller. Literally anything you plug in, it'll work. And then once you've set it up in the main menu, you basically go into here and then you just press whatever you want on your pad. Start, and then uh, select, coin, ABC, and off you go. And that's, that's literally it when your controls are set and then you save it which is to the bottom. You can remap controls per game as well, which is quite handy because sometimes certain games you may want a slightly different uh, way of doing it. And then the actual Mister itself has got a lot of scaling filters. It gives you scan lines. Um, these do various things. They give you scan lines that are slightly brighter and you can adjust the effect on them. They give you virtual scan lines, by linear filtering, uh, all sorts of things you can you can get there and these are like little scripts that tell you what to do interpolation uh, 
LCD. Uh, that's really good for the, the game boy. It looks really cool. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options you can do there with scan lines. And then it gives you gamma correction. So then you can make the screen brighter or not brighter. And you can do audio filters. I've made a few of my own ones. <clears throat> but generally the Mister doesn't have that many audio filters. I wish I really truly understood how these audio filters work. Because some games could do with them. And then if you ever mess it all up, you can reset your settings. Or if once you've set it up and you're away, you can save your settings and that's it. And then you can call reboot, and that tells you about the call, Mr. FBJ, what version you're running, the guy who runs the code, the Mr. Project, and everything. So that's pretty much all the options you can do in the call. So what we're going to do is now we're going to run into some of these games, and we'll show you some of these games. And as you see, Arrow Mark of the Wolves in the background running. Let's have a go with it. I say I'm running this without scan lines because scan lines don't really work very well over YouTube and they tend to look a bit crap. Personally myself, I run with scan lines. I, I like scan lines and I think they look really good. I say as you'll see with this, pretty much everything's perfect. And as long as you've got the correct ROM set, this this literally will run everything. So I'm not going to play the games properly, I'm just going to run through a few things. So that's Garu, as you see, works. Changing games on this is as simple as basically loading a ROM, uh, picking a game, and it'll load. I say I got the uni bias, so you can hold down A, B, and C and press start. Get all the uni bias options. So at the moment, this is in the uh, arcade mode. Not a bad game, this. It's a bit long-winded. It does look nice. And I have been playing it a little bit lately. I remember having this on the uh, Neo Geo AES back in the day when it first came out. I bought it. And um, I remember not having it for too long, so I got a little bit bored of it. But I know, these days I've gone back into playing it, and it is a pretty nice... Pretty nice and maybe slightly basic, shoot them up, but it's quite good, it looks nice. And then if I, uh, because I'm in arcade mode, I can't pause it. So what I'll do is, I will swap to AES mode, and then we'll put in, uh, let's put in Carnot's Revenge. So now we'll get the home AES version of Carlos Revenge. As you see, we've got the credit things coming up. And if you go back to your... Um, like I said, you can do that. You can cut the sides off. It doesn't show it there, but if there is overscan, it will cut that overscan off. I say, as you, as you can probably see yourself, these calls are pretty perfect. But the opposite of this game, eh? You got me. I say they. Was there a color option in your. Some cores have got color options where you can go to the original color palette. Bit of a crazy game, is it? Ah, oh, stunned me. But um, 
the ROM set I've got on you has pretty much got everything. Even some of the... I've managed to get some of the... Um, who are the other games working on you? No, I'll show you now. Um, uh, where are we going? I need to get rid of that for some reason. That does nothing. Right, this is quite a big ROM. I'll show, I'll show you a couple of the big ROMs running. You see, this one takes a little bit longer to buff into uh, RAM. But still only takes a 64. According, according to the um, INI file on this, this still only takes 64. And like I said, because the entire FPGA core is running as a whole all at the same time, you, this is essentially, essentially a new gym. Once you flash it, it is that core, you know? All the best on him, to be honest. Even the fourth one of what we've done by Nasco and Ali is still pretty good. I do like contrast and things like that, but uh, I prefer Metal Slug. So that's Metal Slug 5 running on you. And if I go down one score, I did get a few other interesting things to run on you. I've got the two Star My Shoulder 5 perfect ROMs working on you. This is not the hacked version with the new med with the new title screen and everything. This is the original uh sort of test version they chucked out. It's the same game, it just doesn't have the uh it doesn't have the change menu. As you can see, swapping in between games on this is really quick. Really quick indeed to be honest. I have no idea how to use this guy. I love the sound of my games. Basser is my favorite character. Look at him, you. Me. I'm playing at the moment through the um, capture card screen on my PC. Which I think does have a frame or so a lag on it, I think. It's pretty good though. It's doable, I just don't get sound unfortunately. I'm quite worth it to get the sound for I say you can add your own ROMs to this as well, but you've got to edit the indie file to show up in the menu correctly. Um, the ROMs aren't like the main ROMs, unfortunately. They do have to be like a, a modified FPGA ROM. Like I said, the Dark Soft set pretty much is what it uses. So if you can find that, you're sorted. Um, what else did I put on? Did I put anything else on here? Um, what this could do as well, you know the NG Dev team games and stuff, the cartridges that use the extra chips and that. I suppose this new Geo core could actually it could actually run them as long as those extra chips were added to the FBGA core. Which I don't think they have been, but um if they were added, this could essentially run those games as well. The various versions of World Heroes. Uh what else did I put on here? I put last uh, like you can you can quickly go through the menus as well, which is quite nice. There's a couple of um, homebrew games on here as well. Um, that's what I was looking for. Last Resort. Uh, Last Hope, that's it. I got Last Hope running on you. It's not a particularly great game, it seems, find. Last Hope Pink Bullets would have been better, but I can't, f I can't find the ROM of it. I've looked, I just can't find it. <laughs> I 
to all these um all those like new Neo Geo games. Essentially, you know, as long as as long as those extra chips they use were added to the FPGA core, they could actually run them. You're never gonna get dumps of them, that's the, that's the only thing. I don't like arcade very much, to be honest. And my favourite magician lord. So as you can see, this 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 new Geo core is pretty excellent. And it's something a little bit different to do, you know, something a little bit different to uh, emulation. Uh, the actual Mr. Project, once you actually get a case for the Mr. Pro Mr. Project, which I forgot to mention, funny enough. <laughs> once you actually get a case for it, you don't have to have a case, but you can, you can get a case. It's quite a small little unit, to be honest. It's a very small little unit. The only thing you will find that um, you will require a keyboard, keyboard and mouse, Basically, you will need one. Once you set the controls up, you don't, but some cores require them. So a little keyboard and mouse is all, it's also very handy for it. You will get a lot of cables flying around. So, this is pretty much... Uh, I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to put it to console. And, ah, oh, wonderful. Uh, so that's pretty much the, um, the Mr. FPGA core. Like I said, you need the you need the D10 board, you need the USB uh, hub, you need the I/O board if you're going to output it to a CRT and get exactly what the Neo Geo chucks out. Um, you will require you won't require you can buy a case for it. There's various options for cases, uh, ranging from clear cases to metal cases. Uh, I've got a 3D printed case, which is quite cool. Uh, the machine itself is probably about the size of an iPhone 11, but maybe stack about four of them on top of each other. So it, it's quite small footprint on it. Uh, you do need a keyboard and mouse to get everything running, and uh, you will need, say, you will need an extra RAM and everything. But the other thing of this, this doesn't only run Neo Geo. So. Let's have, a, let's have a quick look through some of the other cores. I won't show you them all because we'll be here all day. Let's have a look through some of the other cores. So basically, you've got a core. Um, this is what it can actually do if I go to the top of the list. This is what it can actually do computer-wise. Uh, the Atari Jaguar core is a beta core. It doesn't work very good, basically. Um, got the Game Boy core, the Genesis core, Neo Geo, NES, Sega CD, uh, Super NES, PC Engine or Turbo Duo, and the Vectrex. I'll show you the Game Boy Core, which is rather cool, the Game Boy Core, actually. Like I said, I, I've got um, scan lines on a lot of this stuff, unfortunately. Can I turn the scan lines off? Uh, just so you uh, get the idea. So if I load Game Boy Advance, so if I load Guardian Heroes. I haven't played much with the Game Boy Advance Core at the moment. You can you can overlay uh, like an LCD effect. See on that one, I've just got scan lines. So you can play a bit of Guardian Heroes on your uh, Mister as well. Oops, button. Good game, is this? I like Guardian Heroes. The uh, Saturn version is brilliant. <laughs> So you can play your game by advanced games. That's what's going on there. So if I sh go back to cores and I do um, game by game by color, and I, it's got a really cool LCD sort of uh, look to this course, really nice. So if I do game by US, I just do Adam's Family. I like the overlay look on this; it's very nice. Uh, it also does game by color. Adam's family on the Game Boy. And it plays pretty much everything I've come across. I, I sort of hit that here at the moment. That's the Game Boy Core. Um, another thing I really like on this, uh, if I go back to cores, is the PC Engine Core. The PC Engine Core is the same. The chips were decapped. 
and uh, they took all the pictures and they remapped all the, the chips from the original chips. Uh, I don't exactly know what's going on there. That's probably something to do with my capture card. Uh, but this will run CD games and it runs PC Engine games. So if I go, I do that. That's weird. Oh, it's because the super graphics one. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta load the super graphics part. So it does super graphics, super CD. Um, I'm pretty sure it does arcade card. Actually, I'm trying that. I won't bother taking the scan lines off because yeah, you just get the idea. Hopefully, the scan lines will look okay. You got 1943. Like I say, it plays all the CD games. Plays all um, super graphics games. Um, so I wonder then, does it play? Um, does it play arcade card games? I think it does because I'm pretty sure I tried one game on it. I'm pretty sure it does. We'll test that now. Uh, where is it? Um, metal, metal, metal Angel. Uh, what am I looking for? I don't remember the name of it. Oh, what's it called? But the uh, metal something I'm looking for. No, it's just do sapphire. Did they call sapphire or is it Genki something something sapphire? Uh, sapphire with amplified music. Right, this is um, hack that was done, which I did amplified all the music. I think this is the downloaded one I got actually. Um, a lot of PC Engine uh, CD games tend to have um, lower CD music, which is a little bit of a shame. Hopefully this will load in. Yep, so it does play arcade card games. But what you can do in the audio part, you can boot the audio, or you can, um, you can lower it. So basically, you can load it. Because this is a amplified version, I don't want to do the boot, basically. So this PC Engine core plays pretty much everything. Actually, no, I'll take I'll take the, uh, the scan lines off. So basically, you got the arcade card game all working perfectly well. Okay, so pretty much apart from the beat the cores, everything I played with it seems to smack on. Um, which is really nice. So we'll go back. I said I don't see if it is spend out with most of this. So that's all the uh, that's all the console codes. So if we go back, we've got um, computer codes. Which is another quite cool thing about this. This plays this basically will turn into all these computers. There's a hell of a lot of computer codes in it. I've been beasted the MSX core quite a bit, uh, which is really good. And I've been playing the uh, Sharp X and Core quite a bit as well. Uh, all these cores are pretty much perfect apart from the PC-19, which is the, the, the e Sharp one is in beta as well. Um, plus, you know, I know people are into it. You've got the Amiga core. This entire project was originally on the Mist, which is another FPGA board, and it was all set up basically for the Amiga. That's what it was all originally started for. Uh, this pack is really nice. Shows you pictures of the actual games. You go back to the future, backlash. So basically, if I click the Back to the Future 2, it'll just load up um, the Amiga version. You don't even have to go into the Amiga menus. You can. You can go into the Amiga and you can add floppy disks. There's loads of options for checking floppy disks and everything on you and various other things. Each core has got a shared load of options for everything. And is, is this game going to load? That's the question. Uh, it doesn't look, doesn't look like it, it will. Ah. Let's get at least one game working on it. That's the first game I've come across that doesn't work. This is, uh, what I'm using is a VHD image, which is basically like a big hard drive image for the Amiga. I say, as far as I know, that's the first. That's the first game I've come across. It didn't work. If I go to top picks, 
nice to shmups because I was playing some of these shmups. Uh, Hybris is quite a nice shmup, it says. It's quite well made as well. I'm quite surprised. So you can get Amiga games on it. You can stretch it to full screen as well, but then you um, see the uh, aspect ratio goes a little bit funny and the integer scale goes a bit funny. You might get shivering in the background. But um, yeah, so that's the Amiga call. So there's various other things you can play in here. Commodore 16, you know, my computer I had when I was a kid, the Atari 8 and Dexter. It's such rather cheesy, you know, to be honest. <laughs> As an age particularly too well, I got a bit. Um, so it, it does all those computer cores. And then if I go back, it also does arcade cores. And there's some really interesting stuff in here. You've got, a, it does a, over 200 arcade games now, I think it does. And these, essentially, once once it's flashed, it is that arcade board. So a lot of the arcade games are older stuff. But as you can see, there's a lot of old classics and stuff in here. Um, in between all those classics, there's the CPS-1 and CPS-2 code, which is amazing. So you can play CPS games on you as well. I'll take the scan lines off again. So basically, cat likes and dinosaurs. All the CPS-1 games are on you, and they all run perfect. I say, the, the, it has got a long way before it's going to catch up with me because Meme has been going for so long now, you know what I mean? But um, the more the community jumps on this and very clever people often start making calls, the more fun, you know, the more stuff, more games and more calls there's going to be. So it's an ever, you know, it's an ever growing project, essentially. So you got CPS 2 game, you got uh, CPS 1 games, and if I go back into the core, I go back and I go down to um, ah, CPS2 games as well. The CPS2 core at the moment is in beta. Everything I've seen on is perfect, mind, but it is in beta, so it's not a full release at the moment. So... Uh, actually, I'll take that off. Uh, did I set up a credit button? Yes, I did. I've been playing this quite a bit. So you finally got Alien vs Predator in his pure arcade form, essentially. It's a nice game, this is well. tricky, though. Best I've got is the fourth boss. On one credit. I've been trying to get a bit further, but it's, <laughs> it's a bit hard. It's hard to stay alive in some of the bosses. Basically, you got the CPS games. There's only a few games so far. Uh, this, Mighty Pang, uh, the Rockman games, um, 1941XX, and... There's one or two others as well at the moment. But it's getting there, you know. It's a Mahjong game as well. And then the last game I'm going to show you. Let's just pick something randomly old. Um, it runs an old core. Donkey Kong games work, but they they run a really weird refresh rate. Um, actually, I'll show you two cores. We'll go. We'll go the original Dig Dug. Don't know if I did I put scan lines on that one. Some of these cores I haven't set up the buttons. What you have to do is each core you, you go to, you've got to set up buttons for. So you get the original tick tick. And I'll show you one more core. You get the original dig dug. Just uh, quickly. Try it again. Running exactly as it should be. And the last core I'm going to show right at the end is going to be good on Apache. Um, this core is still being worked on at the moment, and Dungan Fever on is uh, coming. So I think they're trying to get all the cave games that use this hardware. 
on you. You can uh, play this in Tate as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so I'm... Oh, I think I'm going to run anyway. Okay. The countdown begins. So basically a perfect rendition of um, Dodon Apache's oh. at keyboard. If you're a care fan, it's probably just worth this price alone just for this. <laughs> and it has all been tested as well against the original hardware, and this is perfect. All the timings are correct, the slowdown's correct, everything. Some of the cores, like the SNES core for instance, the people who do an SA1 hacked game on the SNES, uh, which are basically speed hacks, because SNES obviously slowed down a lot. Uh, the SNES core has actually got a turbo option, which pretty much gives you like an SA1 hack on every SNES game, which is really cool. So you haven't got to wait around for the SA1 hacks anymore. You can just put the turbo option in the core and off you go. So guys, while I'm doing the last talk, we'll have, I don't know what the hell that is, Devilfish, but we'll check it on in the background. And I'll turn the sound down. Right then, guys. So anyway, that's the um, the Mr. FPGA Neo Geo Core. Uh, it's pretty fantastic, I'll have to say. Like I said, it will cost you. By the time you buy all the bits and bobs you need for this, it'll probably cost you around about 300 to 350 for a, a Mr. Setup. Um, it does take a little bit of setting up with the um, SD cards and stuff. A bit of reading, it's not too bad. You put it, pretty much just have to put an image on an SD card, chuck it in the Mr., boot it. And then add all your stuff and the scripts. I'll put a link to the wiki page, which gives you all the information you'll need for setting it up, what the machine does, what what it's capable of doing, how to do everything, uh, which is very handy. Um, yeah, do I recommend the Mister over Emulation? Damn right I do. The Mister is really good, and if you want something different from Emulation, uh, you know it's definitely the next best thing to playing on the original hardware. In in a lot of ways, this is probably better than the original hardware because you can output 1080p, 1440p, uh, perfect Neo Geo. But original hardware is never going to be surpassed. As you know, original hardware will always be the original, and will always be as it was. You know, it is emulation and FP, FPGA emulation is the next big step. You know especially the FPGA emulation, is the next big, big step in basically keeping all these games for the future. Uh, th say this project is, you know, it's cataloging everything uh, for future generations. Also, uh, the once they've done the cores and they're open source, when the new version of an FPGA comes along, they could be modified over to the new version of the chip. So you could get a better machine that can do more stuff. Uh, the Mr. Project at the moment is doing a lot of 16-bit, 24-bit sort of home consoles and computers. Um, they, they reckon uh, it can do 32-bit. Uh, there is a PlayStation and a Saturn Core in development, and both developers are quite sure that they, they can do them and get them running on this machine. So, you know, the future for this machine is going to be pretty bright, I think. If they can get Saturn and PlayStation running on you, that, that's pretty amazing as well. Apparently those cores are in beta, they are workable, I have seen videos of them, and they do run at the moment. So, they are coming at some point. Uh, but unfortunately, it takes a while to develop these cores, so you know you've got to give these people time to do it, and they are doing it for free at the end of the day. So yeah, Mister FPGA, if you want a a more accurate emulated option out there than using an emulator with less input lag, more essentially, you know, it is the original hardware once it's actually been flashed the FPGA. So more like the something that's more accurate to the original hardware with a lower input lag, the Mister is the way to go. Plus you also get all the other cores. You get you know a shed load of computers, a shed load of games, shed load of console games, and a shed load of arcade games to play. So anyway guys, I know this is a little bit of a long one. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And it is a little bit of a light overview with the Mr. Award it can do, more based on the Neo Geo part of it, as for the um, seven year anniversary on the Atari Age Forum and the Neo Geo Fred. So head over to there, guys, and um, you know, join join in the forum if you're interested in Neo Geo. And if you're interested, if you don't own a Neo Geo hard, you know, any hardware, and you're interested in playing Neo Geo, check out Emulation. But if you want to take that next step, 
go for the Mr. Project and get the uh, Neo Geo emulation on there. And if you're really up for it, check it out to a CRT and you won't tell the difference. It'll be exactly the same as playing on a Neo Geo, except for you're not actually playing on a Neo Geo. So, hope you enjoyed that, guys. I know for a little bit different uh, video this time. And um, hopefully I'll uh, see you next year for the 8th uh, year anniversary of the Neo Geo Fred. I'm just going to have to figure something else to do, so who knows. Anyway, guys, catch you soon. Take care and stuff, and I'll see you later.